Are you a pro Elden Ring gamer? No. Then why should I listen to you? Because I'm a complete newbie that have beaten the game almost effortlessly. You know all those YouTubers that upload super broken builds that kill opponents fast. Yeah. But that still takes some time to kill the hardest bosses. The trick is, those YouTubers played this game a thousand times and they know all the boss moves. But you haven't, and you will make a lot of mistakes. So what can I do? Take this. I feel like I am ready to defeat all those vile monsters. Before you go, let's go through the basics. All defensive tools can be divided in passive and active. Active defense requires some well-timed action, and it's more effective. But passive defense is always there, even when you screw up. Active defenses is high risk, high reward. Dodge roll allows you to have invulnerability frames, but after invulnerability come recovery, during which you can't do anything. It can further be improved by talismans or flask, but both will reduce your passive defense even further. As a new player, you want to have high passive defenses. You will make mistakes. Trust me. So, how to improve passive defenses? Passive defense is health pool and damage negation. After you have enough stats to wield your main weapon, it is very important to level Vigor to 40 as fast as possible. Compared to 10 Vigor, you will be more than 3 times tougher. Leveling Vigor from 40 to 60 will increase your health pool by additional 30%, which is comparable with wearing a set of good armor. So you might want to level Endurance first instead. First of all, let's understand how to read this thing. Simple version is, defense is like a flat damage reduction, and damage negation is multiplier. Correct version of what's defense is much more complicated. It is actually a multiplier too, between 90% and 10%. This mechanic will allow you to feel much more comfortable at lower level areas when you've leveled up, but you still take at least 10% damage from attacks. This is also a reason why split damage affinities on weapons are often less effective. Damage negation is multiplicative, and reduces damage of corresponding type by certain percent. The higher you go, the less damage negation percent number will increase, but don't be deceived. Percent negation is exactly the amount written on the item. You can also obtain damage negation from talismans and buffs. Not all buffs work together, you can only have one buff per every buff type, except unique buffs. The most important buff type to boost damage negation is body buff followed by aura buff. The best aura buff is Golden Vow Incantation, which is both long and strong. The body buff is the biggest viable, because it negates damage by types. 
but the damage negation on greater barriers is almost twice the amount you can receive from the best armor. If your opponent only uses physical damage, however, the barrier option is not that much stronger, and it reduces your healing taken from all sources. Crabs are yummy. Do note that I am discussing PvE here. Many sources of damage negation are heavily nerfed in PvP. In addition to that, PvP opponents can abuse the bug of instant weapon switch, to gain the damage type you are not resisting. Yes, it happens without any animation. Yes, it is a bug, even if it worked like this in all the previous series of FromSoft games. Unfortunately no, this game isn't perfect, no matter what FromSoft fans would say. Oh oh, I will pretend that I've understood. But what's poise? Think about poise as of invisible bar, with the size of your poise stat. Every hit with light weapon, like sword, reduces 50 points from this bar. And with heavy weapon, like great sword, reduces 100 points. Once the bar goes to zero or below, you are staggered, and the bar immediately goes back to the max value. So you need to have at least 51 poise to be able to receive one hit from light weapon without any stun. In case you are hit with two-handed weapon, it does 10% more poise damage. So in order to resist two-handed hit from heavy weapon, you need at least 111 poise. You can't receive this amount of poise from any set. Not even this ugly mask will help. You can only achieve such heights with bull goat talisman. It is convenient mechanic if you have heavy hitter move that is easily interruptible. Furthermore, there are hits that can't be poised through. Knockbacks, knockouts and headshots will still stagger you. Hmm. Is poise linked to stance break? Not exactly. Stance break, mechanic only available to monsters. It is impossible to stance break players or invader NPC. But other than that, it works similarly to poise. Every monster has invisible stance break bar, which fills with each hit, and recovers if it wasn't hit during a certain time. Once the bar is filled, opponent is stunned for several seconds. During stun, you can crit the opponent. Human-like opponents can be crit from front by being point-blank and clicking light attack. Bigger monsters will show the crit area with golden light. Different weapons, attacks and skills have different stance break damage. I will link to research below. I advise you to use the broken flames of Red Mane's Art of War before it's nerfed. Glint Blood Phalanx is good option too. Can't I just outheal all the damage? The only reliable healing tool in the game is Crimson Flask. All other healing options are either slow or require hitting opponent with some move, and are also slow. 
Some healing tools are there to deal with long dungeons and areas and safe flasks. Prayerful Strike is a very fun skill to use with Mimic Ashes. It heals everyone in radius when it lands. Mimic health is a lot higher than yours, thus percent healing is ultra strong. My Mimic never died, unlike me. Regeneration spells are not scaled and heal very slow but are useful to cast at the beginning of the boss fight. I wouldn't bother recasting it. Overall, healing incantations are much more cost-effective than HP flasks, so it's useful if you need to clear a huge location. One of the most underrated tools is the Warming Stone. It heals two times faster than the fastest regeneration, and just slotting them allows your Mimic Ashes to throw them randomly for you, and all your enemies, to heal in the radius. Don't worry, you have much lower health pool than any of the bosses, and it's flat healing, so it's asymmetrical gains. That makes sense. But why did you put blocking in both active and inactive protection? Because while you need to do some action to block, which is looking straight on target and holding right button, that's about it. You don't need to time it as hard as you time other active defenses. You can, however. Release the block to quickly regenerate stamina between hits. When choosing shield, you need to decide which class of shields to use first. If you like to parry, go medium shield with carrion retaliation. It has the best parry frames, while also much better block stats than buckler. If you fail the timing on parry, your character oftentimes block the attack instead, so it matters. If you suck at parries like me, I advise you to go for great shields. There is a hidden mechanic that makes light weapons to bounce off the great shields. So they are better than medium shields if you don't go for parries. Lord's Warn's shield is secretly one of the best shields for its requirements. The most important parameter when comparing shields is guard boost. Every hit do stamina damage to blocking character. This stat is percent reduction of that cost. 100% removes the cost completely. When you change affinity from standard to any other, you might increase some percent of damage blocked, but you also reduce guard boost drastically. I highly advise to always keep the shield at standard affinity, except if you want to do damage with the shield moves. You can also buff your shield to increase shield boost. Remember, those buffs do not stack. Shield skill overrides your right hand weapon skill. You can equip no skill Ash of War on the shield to suppress that. That's all cool, but the things you've described are all defenses. How do I kill? Since you would spend a lot of stats on Vigor, Endurance and Faith to be tanky, you wouldn't have too much left to scale the damage. Instead, I advise going for unscaled damage sources. Scarlet Rot is one of the best sources of unscaled damage. In fact, 
You can't improve it even with rot themed items, which sucks thematically. But it's perfect fit on build that can survive a plenty of time without much effort. Weapon and spell sources of Scarlet Rot have different flat and percent damage, with weapon sources doing a bit more flat, but a lot less percent damage. Resulting damage is almost the same in PvP, but for the boss size health bars the difference is noticeable. That's why the best source of rot is Xyx's Decay. It has a long startup animation, and it's troublesome to use in certain fights, but think about it. It alone doing at least 30% health bar of damage in 90 seconds. Make sure to cast this spell from your right hand, so you can channel during the jump casts. The second spell is Black Flame. It's doing flat damage on impact, and then burn opponent for 2 seconds afterwards doing 2% of their health damage. Burn damage does not scale with anything. Notably, any black flame spell apply burn, but I like fireball variant the most. Lastly, once you've upgraded your weapon to the max, it will do pretty good amount of damage even without scalings especially with skills, and also, hmm, ooh, I forgot what I was going to say.